All right, 30 years ago today, another police brutality case captured on video sent shockwaves throughout the world. It was the beating of Rodney King. Four LAPD officers were charged in that case, but a jury didn't agree with prosecutors and returned not guilty verdicts, which sparked the 1992 L.A. riots. Ted Rollins has more for us. In 1991, 30 years before George Floyd, it was Rodney King. He was relentlessly beaten by Los Angeles police officers. He was tased and hit more than 50 times with batons. And they struck me across the face real hard with a billy club as I was laying face down with my hands tied. I was scared. I was scared. I was scared for my life. Before King was beaten, he had led police on a high-speed chase and then, according to officers on scene, was resisting before a neighbor started recording video. Despite the police version of events, the video outraged people around the world, including prosecutors in Los Angeles who filed charges against four of the officers involved. Lawrence M. Powell, Timothy E. Wind, Theodore J. Brasino, and Stacy C. Kuhn did willfully and unlawfully commit an assault upon Rodney Glenn King. The four officers each faced charges of assault and excessive force. The trial was moved from downtown Los Angeles to the more conservative Simi Valley, where a nearly all-white jury was selected. In opening statements, prosecutors laid out their case, which was centered on the video. This evidence will show that whatever Rodney King was or whatever he did, it did not justify what you, was, what you saw on that videotape. The four defendants tried together, each had their own attorney with their own defense strategy. There's only one person that's in charge of the situation, and that's Rodney Glenn King. You see him at the very beginning of that tape rise up, not slowly, not lumbering, but very quickly rise up, turn, and charge Officer Powell. Tim Wynn. <coughs> dealt with the situation as it then unfolded in accordance with his training and with his experience. He sees a number of things. He sees wind winding up like this. He knows Powell is behind his back. He believes, his perception is, that they're out of control. Of the four officers on trial, Lawrence Powell was by far the most aggressive on the video. Two of the other officers, Timothy Wind and Theodore Brizano, actually blamed Powell as part of their defense. Sergeant Stacy Kuhn, who was in charge the night of the beating, blamed Rodney King, and he took the stand. This was a managed and controlled use of force. It followed the policies and procedures of the Los Angeles Police Department and the training. In closing arguments, prosecutor Terry White went after Kuhn and Powell in dramatic fashion. This is the man, and look at him. This man laughed. This man taunted. him. All right, Mr. White, get back to the podium, please, and confine your uh, argument to the podium. I'm sorry, Your Honor. The jury took seven days to deliberate, returning a verdict at 3.15 p.m. on April 29th, 1992. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Lawrence M. Powell, not guilty of the crime of assault by force likely to produce great bodily injury and with a deadly weapon. All four defendants were found not guilty. On one charge of assault against Powell, the jury was unable to come to a verdict. Within hours, parts of Los Angeles were burning. The L.A. riots of 1992 would last five days. More than 50 people were killed, thousands more injured and arrested. The damage to businesses in the hundreds of millions. At one point, Rodney King tried to stop the unrest in this iconic news conference, asking if we can all get along. People, um, I just, I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? Several months after the rioting had stopped, all four officers were indicted on federal civil rights charges. Kuhn and Powell were convicted and each sentenced to two and a half years in prison. And here to talk to us tonight about all this, Court TV anchor Ted Rollins is with us. Uh, Ted, you know, you go back in time, and, and it seems like yesterday for me, because that's right about the time that I started at the prosecutor's office, and I remember following all this. There are a lot of similarities now between when you look back at the Rodney King case and what we're getting ready for in five days in the, in the George Floyd trial. 
Yeah, if you think about it, you've got an African American being detained by officers, and there's a citizen videotaping it. That's that's commonplace nowadays. But 30 years ago, the the odds of an individual having a video camera, pulling it out, and capturing it were astronomical. That video then went viral before going viral was a thing. But the world saw this, and the world was outraged. The same thing that we saw with the George Floyd video. Then you add the, the the prosecution. You've got four officers on trial in the Floyd incident. And you had four officers in the Rodney King incident. And of those four, there was one person that clearly was more aggressive. Uh, that, of course, is Derek Chauvin in the George Floyd video. And it was Lawrence Powell back in Los Angeles 30 years ago. Both Chauvin and Powell were also field training officers on scene that night with younger officers. Uh, take a listen. Graduated from the police academy, started serving on the uh, Los Angeles Police Department as a patrol officer. He was promoted to police officer three, became a field training officer, in 1991 and was assigned to Foothill Division as a field training officer. The job of a field training officer is to instruct new police officers or rookies as they're called in uh, field police work. And in fact on March 3rd, 1991, the date of this incident, he was assigned as a field training officer and had in his charge Officer Timothy Wind, another defendant in this case. Derek Chauvin and uh, Lawrence Powell, both field training officers, both in the midst of this, and both of them um, were at the front end of the prosecution. And we're going to see it all play out in Minnesota, uh, as you said, in five days. Now, Ted, there's also some very important uh, differences, I think. And, and, and first is, um, in the Rodney King case, we only have the one video. Uh, during the George Floyd death murder trial, we've got the citizen cameras, right? But we've got all these body cams that pick up everything that happened. Um, to me, that's a big difference. Huge difference. And that was a big part of the trial um, because the defense argued that what you saw on the video was the aftermath after um, Rodney King was in a high speed chase and after he allegedly, according to the officers on scene, attacked the officers and was resisting arrest to the point where they had to subdue him. Um, that video actually hurt, pro the lack of video hurt prosecutors in the LA case. It may help prosecutors this time around, um, or maybe not, but they see the, this time around, the jury will see the whole picture from the moment the first call is made until George Floyd dies on the pavement. Uh, another huge difference is jurisdiction. And, and, and the Rodney King case, as you pointed out, was not tried where it happened, right? It was moved. Whereas the case involving the death of George Floyd took place in Hennepin County, took place in Minneapolis, and that's where the trial is going to be. Right. It, the, the Rodney King case was in Simi Valley after a change of venue was first denied. It was then later granted. Um, and in the Minneapolis case, they did try to move it. They tried to move it out of the city of Minneapolis. But the people that had to endure this, had to watch this video, these will be the make up of the jurors. This will be a Hennepin County jury, and uh, that's the way the prosecution wanted it, and that's the way that the judge ultimately ruled. Now, that may change. We may get halfway through jury selection, and it may be apparent that they can't uh, field a jury in Minneapolis. And at that point, of course, the change of venue would be renewed and possibly granted. But as we uh, sit here tonight, this jury will be a Hennepin County jury. We're not moving the case. I have ruled already. <laughs> not, no. it's not being, you know, it's amazing to watch this video and you see the date March 3rd, 1991. And finally, one other difference in the reaction to this is that George Floyd, the video goes viral. People see it. There's that reaction at that moment. And that's when the demonstrations and the riots take place. And the Rodney King case, that didn't happen until after the trial. And I think that is on the front of the minds of 
all the folks in Minneapolis, knowing how unpredictable trials and verdicts can be and reactions to trials and verdicts. So they're preparing, um, I, I think, much in, a, in a much different way than they did 30 years ago in, in L.A. Absolutely. Um, you're right. You know, when, when the, the video um, was first viewed around the world, it sparked outrage, but it didn't spark the protest that we saw after the verdict. So when the not guilty verdicts came out, it was the first time that people were just absolutely shocked, saying, why, you got to be kidding me. We watched this video, and you're saying that this video was okay? This was okay? And it was at that moment that the 92 riots were sparked. Literally, within minutes of the verdict, um, they began, and within hours, the city uh, was burning. All right. Ted Rollins, great work. Uh, thanks One so much. One other note, Vinny, yes. if we got time. Um, the guy that took that video back 30 years ago, he was a plumber, and uh, he just happened to live at that intersection, and he had bought a, a video camera. Uh, his name is George Holiday. He just received that video camera back about three years ago. Uh, they showed up at his house, gave it to him. He tried to sell it on eBay for $220,000, and... Uh, didn't get any bites, so he still has his video camera uh, 30 years. But, I mean, what a piece of video. It literally changed our world. Absolutely. Ted, thanks so much. You bet. When we come back, we're going to open up our unsolved case file. And uh, tonight, again, we need your help. It's a horrific murder um, of someone who served his country as a Marine and then came back and wanted to be in law enforcement, was working security. There's a picture of the killer, and the case has not been solved. That's next. <laughs>